3.5 concerns dividing polynomials. And there are two methods for dividing polynomials. One is called long division, which you should be familiar with. And the other is called synthetic division. So I'm actually going to make two short videos on this. One basically just long division, and then I'll do synthetic division uh, next. Okay, so let's start with something really basic that you would know how to do. Now, remember, this is how you write a long division. You have a little thing that you stick a number under. <laughs> what do you call that thing? The dividing sign. So if I want to divide 2 into 9, I would say, well, what's the most times it can go in? And I would say 4, and then I would multiply 4 times 2 gives me 8, and then I would subtract and I would get 1. So that would mean that 9 is equal to 4 times 2 plus 1. And this is what we call the division statement, and we're going to use that kind of format when we're working with polynomials. Um, let's do one a little bit harder. So 35, actually I'm going to move it over here because I think I'm going to run out of room. 35 into 783. So 35 doesn't go into 7, but it goes into 78 now. And I know it goes in 2 times because 2 times 35 is 70. And I subtract, right? Once you do this, you subtract. And I get 8. I bring down the 3. And I say, how many times does 35 go into 83? And it's going to be 2 again. And 2 times 35 is 70. And I have 13 for a remainder. So there are little, uh, there is terminology for these parts. I don't know if your teacher would ask you these things, but this number out front is called the divisor. Divisor. This number underneath is called the dividend. Dividend. And this number up here is what we call the quotient. And this number here, of course, is your remainder. So if I was to write this out, I could say um, 783 is equal to 35 times 22 plus 13. Or you might have written it out like this, and then you'd say 22 and 13 over 35. That was another way you might have done it. But this is what we're going to be using for the polynomial. So I want you to think of it like that. Okay, so let's go to a polynomial now. This first one here, I have 3x plus 1 divided into 6x squared plus 5x minus 5. And you're going to say, oh my goodness, how do I get rid of this? How do I divide this? So what you want to do is you want to look at this number here, 3x and this number here. So I want to get rid of 6x squared. Okay, so what would I have to multiply 3x by to get 6x squared? And you should know, it would be 2x. So I'm going to put the 2x right over top of this 5x. It's like finding your place settings, right? You have to be in the right spot. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. And you can see I'm going to be eliminating these now. So I'm going one by one. Now I also have to multiply 2x times 1 because it's multiplied by 3x plus 1, right? So that gives me plus 2x. And then I subtract. And obviously I get rid of these. And that's the idea. So you want to knock them off one at a time. Okay, you're moving this way across. So 5x minus 2x now is going to be 3x, and I bring down the minus 5. And how many times does 3x plus 1 go into 3x minus 5? Well, I'm trying to get rid of the 3x, so I want a 1 here. Don't worry about the second number, okay? You're only looking to these ones every time, the very first number, or variable, or term, I should say. So when I do 1 times 3x plus 1, and I get 3x plus 1, and I subtract. So minus 5 minus 1 is minus 6. Be careful with your minuses. So this is my remainder. And my division statement would be, I would say, oh, okay, 6x squared plus 5x minus 5 is equal to this times this 
So it's the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. So I'm going to say 3x plus 1. And you could expand this if you really wanted to spend time doing that kind of stuff, but I don't think you do. Okay, so this is my division statement. Now there's one other thing that you have to be careful with once you've written this out. When you're dividing by something, remember this is going to be in the denominator. And when you're in the denominator, this can never be equal to zero. So there's going to be a restriction on the variable. So here's what I'm trying to restrict, right? 3x plus 1. I don't want it to be equal to zero. So I want to know what value for x will make it equal to zero. So I get 3x equals negative 1. And x is equal to minus 1 third. So I want x is not equal to minus 1 third. And that's my restriction. Okay, so it's that easy. Now, there are some that are a little more difficult, and we'll go over a few of those in a minute here. So let's go down to this one here. Divide this by x minus 1. So I put the x minus 1 down first. That's my divisor. I write up my dividing sign. And now I have to order I have to write this out in descending order. So I'm going to write that over here. Write in descending order. Now this term, or this, um, this polynomial that we're dividing, it has a place setting for each of the x's. In other words, I have an x cubed, an x squared, an x uh, constant. So that's the way I have to write it out. And we'll see in the next example that if you don't have one of these, like say I didn't have a, an x squared in here, I would have to write a 0x squared. And I'll show you that in the next example. So stay tuned. Okay, so now I've written it all out very nice and neatly. I've got it in descending order. So cube squared, power of 1, power of 0. So now I divide. So how many times does, I want to get rid of 5x cubed. So what do I have to multiply an x by to get 5x cubed? That's what you're asking yourself, okay? Don't make it difficult. What do I have to multiply x by to get 5x cubed? And you should say 5x squared, right? So you're trying to eliminate each term as you go down the row here. So I multiply this times x, and I get 5x cubed, which is what I wanted. If you're not getting rid of this, then you made a mistake, right? And then I have minus 5x squared. And I'm going to subtract. So when you subtract, remember that if you are minusing a minus, I'm going to put the minus sign out here. Sometimes that helps people to make sure you know what you're doing. So this disappears, right? Comes 0. And minus 7x squared minus a minus means a plus. So that's going to give me minus 2x squared. And I bring down the minus x. Now I want to get rid of the negative 2x squared. So I say, what do I have to multiply x by to get minus 2x squared? And you should say minus 2x. Now I multiply it out. I get minus 2x squared plus 2x. And again, I'm going to subtract. Now remember when you're subtracting, minus minuses, so minus 2 minus minus, that's this one's gone. That's my plan here. And negative x minus plus, so negative, negative, that gives me minus 3x plus 3. And now I get rid of this term. Don't worry about the second term every time. You'll always have two things to worry about, but just get rid of this one. So I have x, I want to multiply it by minus 3, right? So minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Negative times a negative is a positive. And when I subtract these, I'm going to get 0, which makes you very happy. And you're going to be working... Um, when we're finding factors, we want this to be zero, and that's coming up really soon. Okay, so the division statement, I would say, okay, 
Therefore, 5x cubed minus 7x squared minus x plus 3 is equal to, so I have x minus 1, times what's on the top. Now, if you forget, go back to the really basic very first equation I did up here of 2 going into 9. And I had 9 is 4 times 2 plus 1. So you will remember that. I don't have to add 0 here because, because it's 0, right? It's good. Okay, so far so good? I hope so. If you're having trouble, let me know. That's the thing about doing this on YouTube. I don't have any students saying, stop, stop, I'm stuck. Okay, this one, I'm dividing by x plus 6. So I write x plus 6. Oh, you know what we forgot over here? We forgot to say what the restric restriction was. So x is not equal to 1 because 1 minus 1 would be 0. Okay, so you have your, this is your division statement, and this is your restriction. Okay, back over here. So I have x plus 6 now, and I'm going to divide that into, now this is one I told you about, it's going to be a little trickier, because if you look here, I have the fourth power, but I have no cubes. I go squared x constant. So I have to make a place setting. It's like me saying um, the number 1002 and you say I have 1002. Well you can't write that. You have to write 1002. You put in zeros, right? You have to have place settings for everything. If you want to divide 1002 you wouldn't write this, right? Okay so same thing here. So I write x to the fourth and then I can say I have no x cubes because I need this spot because you're going to end up with a cube somewhere along the way. And then I have minus 25 x squared, and I have 62 x, and I subtract 36. Okay, so here we go. First thing you're doing, you're getting rid of this term. Don't worry about anything else. Just try to eliminate this. What do you multiply x by to get an x to the fourth? Now you see, if I didn't put an x cubed here, I would have nowhere to place this. It has to be above the same term or the same exponent. Okay, so now I multiply. So I get x to the fourth and I get 6x cubed. And then I subtract. Don't forget, subtracting, watch your minus minuses. This disappears. 0 minus a positive is a negative. Then you bring down the next term with its sign and you say, okay, I want to get rid of this term, minus 6x squared. So this is x, so I need minus 6, whoops, I made a mistake here, didn't I? This was a cubed. I want to get rid of 6x cubed, so I need negative 6x squared. So I'm going to have something in each, over top of each one of these terms. So now I expand, I get minus 6x cubed, and this becomes minus 36x squared. And I subtract again. These cancel out, and minus 25 minus minus 36, so I'm adding 36, that gives me 11x squared. I bring down the next term, so 62x, and now I want to get rid of 11x squared. So that means x divided into this is going to give me 11x's, right? So I have to multiply by 11x to get 11x squared. And I multiply this times this and this times this. So I get 11x squared plus 66x's. And again, I subtract. These disappear. 62 minus 66 is minus 4x. And I bring down the last term. Oops, that wasn't very straight. Minus 36. How do I get rid of a minus 4x? I need a minus 4. So minus 4x minus 24. Subtract again. So it's minus 36 plus 24 would be negative 12. And there you have it. That was a long one. 
Okay, so your division statement now. So I'm going to write out the whole thing. x fourth minus 25x squared plus 62x minus 36 is equal to, this is the easy part now, so what you divided by, what was in the numerator here, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 4, and your remainder. So this is your division statement. Very important because you're going to be asked for that somewhere along the way. Division statement and restriction now. You tell me what it is. We take a look at x plus 6. What would make this equal to 0? So I want x is not equal to negative 6. Okay, so you're going to say, oh, well, is there an easier way to do this? The synthetic division is different. It requires you to remember, um, remember how to do it. Um, like there's a bit of a trick to it, but I'll show you in the next video. Um, this one always works. Sometimes when you have, um, you're dividing by something like 3x plus 6 or something, it gets a little more confusing. And this is the tried and true method. So that's dividing using long division. And the next video I do will be dividing using synthetic division. Hope you understood it all. Bye.